Hello everyone and welcome back to Lave Station and Base Construction in Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. We are at another jewel window, but first I would like to refine the it's a base so that it A doesn't flip out so much and B maybe we can just get rid of the swerve before our final descent into Lave's atmosphere so we'll just be relying on the jets and then we won't have something that we don't need attached to the base. In fact, if we have this arranged properly, because we're going to decouple this off, uh, we would want to have a docking port there, and then we could dock something else to the tail of it if the wing isn't in the way. So, we've got a lot of problems here. Uh, the wing is in the way right now, uh, in terms of that particular arrangement. Uh, but also, if we get rid of this, the center mass and center lift uh, definitely is too nose-heavy in that case. This looks like it's proper, right? Uh, though we keep flipping out, so that suggests that it's not proper. So if we get rid of all the fuel, what does it look like? And toggle that. See, I mean, it's not, it, 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 there's no visual indication of it being uh, tail heavy. Even though it seems in flight that in this situation with no fuel there, it's tail heavy. Or if we dump all the methane, the methane is right at the center of mass, so it's not going to change anything, I don't think. So we've had problems with that, but the center mass and center lift here sure don't give an indication of that. But that's be probably because they're wrong. <laughs> and they're probably wrong. Uh, I mean, maybe the nose cone is not doing things right. I don't know. But anyway, so something's weird about that. But we have to keep that in mind if we're going to redesign this. Otherwise, we're going to get into more trouble. So, taking this off, maybe maybe that's how it ought to be. I mean, if it's tail, it was tail heavy before, maybe this is okay. Uh, another thing that we had was the rear landing gear was compressing too much. Though I, I reduced the spring strength and increased the damper strength, so it shouldn't have been compressing too much. But we saw that maybe I should just tuck the nose landing gear in a bit. But... But then it won't match up with the other docking ports, right? So maybe I should just lower these. I'll just lower these. So we have to be able to fly this without the swerve attached, is the deal. I mean, it looks level. But now, will the docking ports match up? I don't know. Okay, so... Like this, we could move the wing up, and then it won't be obstructing the rear docking port. At a certain point, it's going to get... Oh, I, I should move the ladders. If we keep moving the wing up, the canard is going to be less and less useful in this position, though. Hold on. I, I just lifted up the canard, and over there, it looks like the old canard look, doesn't it? Well, that's sneaky. Didn't notice that before. We're obstructing the windows there, which is not nice. But, okay. Yeah, the canard is actually really close to the center of mass right now. But, okay. Still, this is not great. These should also do pitch then. No, they are. Okay. Now we can move the wing all the way up here, but then the center of mass and center of the lift look like they were before. Which seem troublesome in certain flight regimes. Also, our fuel is no longer center-mounted here. But then, when we dump the swerve, we don't expect to have hydrogen. I wish we had the ability to dump propellant. So now it's looking like that. So, in theory, we'll have no hydrogen, or else we'll pump it up into the center tank. Let's say we have the center tank full for some reason. We better not have more hydrogen than that. We'll have to burn it off somehow. But then it's like that. Now that seems really nose heavy, but then it seemed all right before and it turned out we were tail heavy. Now one thing we need is a docking port on the tail. At the very least, we could have some supplementary power once we lose the engine. We could have like a terrier or something. I don't know if that'd be helpful, but... Anyway, that's the biggest docking port we've got. And then we could put the swerve on it. And then separate from it. Um... Well, I guess we'll see... 
if this flies. I don't know if there's anything else I want to do to it. it seems more tightly packed than before, that's for sure. Okay, here we go. Uh oh, these things. Okay, um, no auto switch. No auto switch. No, stop. This one is methane air deprived. Um, we only have one jet right now. Okay, now now it's spooling up. Okay, how does it feel to fly it? That's the question. It's much lighter right now, so... Uh, the nose heaviness is preventing me from lifting the nose up very easily. It's possible to fly it, but it's, it's not great. But then, really it was possible to fly the other version, and then it turned out that it flipped all over the place when we were entering the atmosphere of Lathe, so, or Kerbin for that matter. So again, at certain speeds it wants to do that. And that may be because of the extra pressure on the nose cone, pulling the center lift forward, something like that. I mean, this is more or less how it flew with, with the swerve, so uh, that hasn't changed. Now, once you put the swerve back on, it's not going to be flyable. The center mass will definitely be behind the center of lift. Unless we attach some thing forward, uh, on the forward end, that's about 10 tons. We still haven't gotten the science to unlock the Mark III parts yet, so that's why we're sort of stuck with this. With the Mark III parts, we'll have higher heat tolerance, and that can change a lot of how we decide to build this thing. And also we'll have larger cargo bays, so maybe putting the base modules into the cargo bay and then dropping them off and then reusing the plane like that, instead of turning the plane into the base, would become more viable. But for now, we're just having the plane be the base. Because having smaller base modules is, like, counterproductive. Wanting to see how it lands, of course. Uh, seem to be lined up with the middle of the two runways. Pulling the nose up is a little bit hard. Okay, well, we can land here, but as we've seen, landing on Lathe is a whole other business. Okay, well, let's just, let's just revert that. Oh, yeah, let's just revert that. I just want to go back to the VAB quickly. Okay, so it can apparently fly like this. And there we had the four tons in here. Now, removing that four tons shouldn't make too much of a difference. It does move the center mass a little bit further forward and down. Okay, with the swerve on, it's obviously not flyable, and that's intentional. That's how it's going to be. Maybe we should have some sort of engines that we can rely on without the swerve. Maybe we should just have a smaller base plane and <laughs> land like like a small base plane with jets on the surface and then have this whole bit be separate. So many possibilities. I think we'll go with this version first for now because we just flight tested it and I don't want to mess with it too much. But uh, there are other possibilities for sure. So we have two sparks like that. But when we lose the lose the swerve, and then we'll have some fuel over here. How about some baguettes or something? And again, I'm putting it at the center of mass, or close to the center of mass, so it doesn't make too much of a difference to things. But that'll give us a little bit of delta V. After we lose the swerve. 185 meters per second. So that'll just be for orbital adjustments after we've captured around Lathe. We'll go tail first into Lathe's atmosphere 
because the nose cone seems to like to blow up. Uh, so for our capture, we'll just go tail first. And then if uh, you know we don't successfully capture, we can use the swerve to finish the capture. And then after that, we'll dump the swerve for the further entries into Leif's atmosphere. But we might need to do some corrections, and we'll do those with the little sparks. So that is the plan. Let's try and turn this into a launch system of some kind. So I've decided to go away from the three booster situation we had on the previous launch where we had three vectors on each booster and sort of put them around our it's a base and this time we are going to have more of a shuttle stack and see how it works out for us though that's of course troublesome especially since the fuel line keeps uh, decoupling not decoupling uh separating from things let's get that back on properly uh, that's important because we're going to be lighting the swerve on the ground and we're going to have the hydrogen tank feed it But it really needs to stay connected. Okay, so yes, we have a hydrogen tank on there so that the Space plane the it's a base can draw from this tank instead of these and Then we also have well, of course the fuel for the five vectors at the bottom here We have five there and then two Clydesdale boosters so you can see where the center of mass and center of thrust is right now. It's a little bit askew. Hopefully, you know what, let me just turn these a little bit. <laughs> uh, let's not do a hopefully. Now I haven't put the Cevertrons on because I wanted to see the center of mass and center of thrust and also show it. Uh, so the vectors do have the 10 degrees of gimbling, so that should help. However, this is one of the situations where I really wish we had fuel priority because what I want to have happen is for the top two tanks to drain last here. I want this tank to drain first and then that one and then that one. And the reason for that is to keep the center of mass as high up as possible. And we can't do that, right? There's no fuel lines that we could... I mean, the fuel line thing isn't going to work great for this. So, yeah. For those who think that fuel lines are sufficient, no, not for a shuttle stack. The real shuttle had the oxygen tank on top and the hydrogen tank on bottom, so it kept the center of mass high like that. Uh, but we don't have that kind of division. So, unless we, like, empty tanks. But even then, our oxygen... The relationship between the methane and oxygen here is not the same as... Uh, on the shuttle, so with the hydrogen and oxygen, we don't have hydrolox engines here. So yeah, uh, another thing we can do is just whoops, uh, shift the whole thing up. I bet I disconnected the fuel line again. Yep. <laughs> oh boy, maybe I can't move it up. Let's just leave it be. I don't know if it's actually disconnected. Uh, I think it's disconnected. I swear the other end of it is here. The other end of it was still here. I, I don't know if I can connect it to the engine or not. Like this. It seems to connect, but I'm not 100% sure that's working right. And then this got changed. Okay, so let me put the Cevertrons on and then we'll try it out. Okay, well I just started to try to put the Cevertrons on, but... Uh, we have symmetry here, and symmetry isn't working. Okay, yeah, no, it's not doing symmetry. Um, let me restart the game. <laughs> what can I do, right? Okay, a restart seems to have solved the symmetry problem, though maybe just F5 and F9 would have done it too. And I don't know if this is the right orientation. Let's bring it out and see. I think I want to roll it 90 degrees, just so I don't have to roll it during launch. Did somebody sneak on? Uh, Neil Dunkerman snuck on. Well, shucks. Um, let's go. Uh, here we go. Yep, yep. Okay. okay, well, that's leaning in the right direction anyway. But we probably want it to go straight up. For a little bit. Otherwise, it's turning a little bit too early. We're a little bit too powerful here. Uh, okay. The problem is throttling down means that we're getting less vector thrust, and less vector thrust means less vector gimbling.
Oh no, it's it's rolling. Oh, okay, okay. Uh... Oh no. <laughs> I should just only have the shuttle shuttle, not these haphazard shuttles. Uh... Oh, we can't turn off the boosters. Okay, try and go straight up. Try and go straight up. Uh... Okay. Separation. Uh... Uh... Okay, throttle up. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, oh! Uh, oh! Uh, oh! Uh, no! 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 Up! 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 Yeah, just stay there. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Not really, but that's our official line anyway. Did we get actual signs? Three point two. Well. I really shouldn't have even tried to turn early. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, pretty soon is the part where I want the fuel up front, but maybe it'll be alright. I don't know. I hope the vectors don't drain the little baguette fuel, though. Uh, you know what? This is not telling me to write Delta V at all. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, I think we need to redo that. Um, you know what? Just for fun, just for fun, we're going to boost back and have Neil Dunn try and recover. This should be great. We will demonstrate that it is perfectly safe because of our abort modes. That's how it should be done, right? Now this is not aerodynamic right now, so we better not go down. Because right now we're in, we're, we're in thin air, so that's okay. We could just use the jet though, but there's a lot of speed for the jets to burn off. Then again, we also have drag. Actually, we can just point up and let the drag slow us down for a bit. Did the baguette fuel get depleted? That's a good question. Oh, we can't check like this. I wish we could check by right-clicking on it, but no. No, they're fine, so... Okay, we're actually going up now. Okay, trying to head back here. Okay, so draining all the hydrogen fuel as basically planned. Probably that's okay. Let's decouple it. Don't come back. <laughs> There's our little spark engines pushing us away from the swerve. Okay, we've got a lot of speed. Let's see how we do. Right now our center of mass is too far forward actually. I, I'm trying to pull up but I can't. So that's maybe, maybe the center of mass is too far forward. But yeah, at these speeds our aerodynamics make it so that it's hard to keep the nose up. Oh, uh, and it's rolling for some reason. I'm trying to roll the other way, I swear. I don't know why it's rolling, but it's rolling. Okay, well, let's see if we can get the jets on. I guess the sparks are good too. Sure, why not? Are the jets active? Uh, I can't stop this roll. I don't know why the roll is happening. Sure, just do roll as well. I don't know what else to do. Everything, please help me with the roll. Um, I don't know if the jets are actually doing what they're supposed to do. 
and I can't stop the roll. Oh, poor Neil Dunn. Doesn't actually say Neil Dunn perish though. Wait a second. Is Neil Dunn somewhere that didn't perish? Uh, let's just revert that. <laughs> okay, abort, uh, abort to launch site, return to launch site did not work out. But I think we learned something about the plane. That That's no good. I don't know why it's rolling all over the place. It is what one would expect to be a lot of roll control. I still think the jets didn't actually come on though. I think we'll just go s try and go straight up for more. And not throw all down the vectors. It's complicated. That fuel line's getting stretched by quite a lot. Maybe I should have a dummy tank here. That is an empty tank. Seems like a waste, but it's better than flipping all over the place. Well, in theory, maybe it'll help, maybe it won't. Okay, well, you know, this is all about making mischief. Let's see. Neil Dunn's at it again. All right. Okay. Here we go. And let me just say up. Go ahead. Go up. As up as you can, please. No rolling. It really likes, it really wants to roll. I'll just let the SAS handle the up part and I'll, I'll try and handle the roll part. Well, we're past the speed of sound. Uh, it's not handling the up part very well. But then again, I'm not handling the roll part very well either. So, but I guess it's, combined it's better than before. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to lean a little bit that way, but not that much. Okay, we're sideways. But still, booster set. Okay, we're in better shape now. Oh, what the heck is that? Something went further forward than us? Don't know what that could have been. Ah, shuttles, honestly, why do I bother? <laughs> Sometimes. It's only reading 12 tons of hydrogen here, and I don't know why. Did I... oh, hmm? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Gosh darn it, what happened now? No, there's more than 12 tons. Maybe it's just reading this stage and it's not counting that. Why is it draining this 4 tons? Oh, the fuel line must have decoupled. Oh, gosh darn you. Anyway, I got the apoapsis too high here. I really don't want the high apoapsis. Uh, controlling this is hard. Claims 960, but I bet we don't get that much. And well, we could probably we could have probably we could probably go now from this apoapsis. Well, there's a dual periapsis there, but we are currently on the fuel in the space plane. No, I guess we're not. That's just reading wrong. I mean, it says four eleven point four seven, but it's just not including this part. So okay, we've got enough to keep the booster portion. I was worried that we were on the hydrogen in the space plane, but we're not. Okay, and go. Probably should have started earlier. Ah, that wasn't the right Delta V. Okay, separation. And continuing. We don't have a lot of fuel to work with as far as maneuvers in the dual system, though. As usual with this thing. 
Oh, I forgot to take the fuel from the... Ah, uh, I forgot to transfer the fuel out from that. The fuel line had decoupled. There's still probably about a ton of fuel over there. 1.4 tons, I think. Ah... Uh, we would have been much better off if we had that. Go, why don't you just trust fuel lines? Well, they keep going off. <laughs> I can't trust the fuel lines. Oh, it all works with the fuel lines. Yeah, right. At least the decouplers using fuel crossfeed through them doesn't have them randomly decide to separate from their target. Well, it's not keeping track of my trajectory at all anymore. Or the burn. Oh, okay. Well, it's showing me something, so let me get rid of that. Okay, well, we'll just do a mid-course correction, I think, unless that turns out to be not so good. No, that's definitely an uh, inclination change we need here. Well, we've got 1,076, which is actually more than some of the other times that we've gone to duel with the Itza base. But we won't follow it immediately, because we probably want to send something else. All over there is a Tyloperiapsis. I don't know if that's the best place to be encountering Tylo, though. No, there might be a way to capture, but I don't want a lot of inclination either. Oh, look at those iterations. Okay. I mean, if the iterations are reading that correctly, looking at that line, that doesn't give me a whole lot of faith. And then if we flatten out the orbit, that's not right. It's just not the best place to encounter Tylo for this purpose. I mean, we could just boost our dual periapsis up over there. That's pretty flat to lathe anyway. So as far as I read that, we get this dual periapsis here, which is safe. We pass by Tylo. It sort of captures us so that we are crashing into Jewel, but then we'll go up to Apoapsis and boost up. Assuming I don't mess up something. So maybe that's okay. So that's the mid-course correction, but we don't want to do that right now because we want to launch something else over to Lathe. I think though, uh, for now, I'm gonna leave it here. I think we're going to launch a refueler uh, module for the station. But for now, we've had a little bit of excitement in this particular video with this iteration on the It's a Base, and I'll leave it here. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.